Company that tracks world weather conditions says there were a number of lightning strikes near the path of Flight 8501. With me now, the CEO of that company, Earth Networks, Bob Marshall. Also here again, CNN aviation analyst, Mary Schiavo, who used to be an inspector general with the Department of Transportation. So, Bob, your company uses lightning sensor technology. I want you to walk us through the video that you've provided from a storm that you captured recently in Dallas earlier this year. We're showing it right now. Go ahead. Yeah, so the video that you see on the screen is an example of a severe thunderstorm. It, it may be similar to the one that that plane flew into. And what you see there is just a, an extremely violent storm. It's, you see bubbling of the, the clouds and, and the extreme amount of lightning that's in that storm. And, and when you have that kind of situation with that much lightning, one thing you know is there, there's very severe turbulence, and you definitely do not want to fly into that plane, I'm sorry, into that storm. And that's what the, why the lightning data is so important. It's really not about the lightning itself. It's that the fact that the lightning identifies the most severe areas of turbulence and danger in a storm. Mary, what's typical? Do pilots fly above that usually? Uh, no, they try to fly around it or avoid it because... Uh, many times you can't get above it or the storm is climbing and developing faster than the pilot can climb and go up and over it. And you don't want to go near the, uh, the ends of the thunderhead clouds because they're called the anvil clouds. And at the ends of those clouds on the top of these weather formations, that's the most severe weather of all. Horrendous uh, uh, hail, winds, uh, that's where you do not want to be. So they usually go around it or avoid it. Bob, you say even if lightning struck the plane, that that wouldn't necessarily bring the plane down, right? No, that's right. I mean, planes planes are designed to withstand lightning strikes, and that happens on a on a daily basis, and that should not be the issue. In my mind, as I've reflected on this over the last day or so, you know, there's a lot of talk now about technology and and, and why don't we have real time data to know exactly where that plane is at all time. The bigger question to my mind is, is why isn't real-time weather data available to the pilots and the controllers that would prevent them from flying into this storm to begin with? If we is had that, that true, in Mary? place. Well, not to the degree of information uh, that, that Mr. Marshall's talking about. They have onboard radar in big commercial planes, and of course the airlines, depending upon how good they want to be, can have really good in-house meteorology departments. And then, of course, you have the National Weather Service and Air Traffic Control. But it all depends on how much you want to look at it, and this kind of data concerning the lightning is not readily available. And, of course, it's somewhat subjective. Would they have grounded this flight in the U.S., do you think, Mary? Oh, I think in the U.S. this flight would have been canceled because of, for, for a lot of variety of reasons, not the least of which is the U.S. carriers would have had to deal with schedule disruptions because the flight might have been deviated, et cetera. I do think it would have been canceled in the United States, without a doubt. And, Bob, you, you know, know on a, on a, weather is not uncommon in this part of the world, right? No, it's definitely not. I mean, this is the intertropical convergence zone. There's tons of storms, and it's not dissimilar to, you know, a part of the United States in the severe weather season here. And I think one of the keys here is that, uh, you know, uh, lightning is a critical piece of information, and the National Transportation Safety Board in a 2012 safety report called for the use of total lightning data uh, for pilots and controllers to avoid these specific situations. I mean, they looked at 12 different incidents and accidents uh, uh, in uh, recent times here where there were situations, very dangerous situations, fortunately no fatalities, and the conclusion was, even here in the U.S., with the radar that we have, planes flew right into severe convective storms and experienced damage and injuries on the planes, and the conclusion was that if you use lightning information, you would have steered clear there. And, and the question is, you know, why can't we get this technology deployed globally? Why can't we get this information in the hands of the pilots and the controllers to prevent these planes from flying here? And if we can do that, we wouldn't be sitting here talking today. Lessons to be learned. Bob Marshall and Mary Schiavo, thanks to both of you. We do know the last request from the